Hello and welcome back to Fat Boss TV. Today we're looking at the Lady Dark Vein encounter in Castle Nathria. So this boss is absolutely great. It's easily one of the better encounters in the instance, but it does have a fair amount of abilities that need to be explained. So before we go too deep on how much we enjoyed it, let's jump straight in with the main mechanic. So this boss has four abilities, each of which is linked to a physical container within the room. There are two on the left and there are two on the right. As the fight progresses, these slowly fill up with energy over time, and this is shown in a new UI element. At 33 and 66% full, the abilities linked to that particular container will become augmented, making them harder to deal with. And at 100 energy, any container will just begin to pulse lethal damage to the entire raid. So to release the energy in the containers, you can simply just click on them. This will just remove the energy pretty quickly while dealing light raid-wide ticking damage. So you'd think that the strategy here is just to click on them whenever they're about to go above 33%. That way you'll never have to deal with any of the augments throughout the entire fight. And the actual strategy isn't too far from that. However, there is just one other complication in play. Right from the start, the boss will focus the far left container. Whilst it's focused, it will gain energy faster, but it also cannot be clicked on to release its power. This focus lasts for 100 seconds, and over this time, the container will gain approximately 70 to 75 energy. This, however, can be broken early, as the boss will break focus not only after 100 seconds, but also if you're able to remove 25% of her health during that time, which is more likely to be the case. After the focus is broken from the first, it will then be applied to the container directly to its right, and this repeats until it's on the final container on the far right-hand side. As all containers are slowly gaining energy regardless if they're being focused or not, we set up a simple rule of always clicking and releasing energy from a container if, one, if they're next to be focused, as you don't want the container that's just about to be focused to already have a shit ton of energy in it, and two, if the focus on that container has just ended, as you'll want to empty all of the energy that was generated over the duration of the focus. If you understand and manage to pull that off, you've essentially got that part of the fight down. So let's look at each container and how it augments the ability. The first container is linked to the exposed desires. This is a burst of physical damage on the tank that leaves behind a dot. You want to swap around two stacks. At 33% in the container, random raid members will be debuffed, which links the players with the tank. This makes a portion of the damage that the tank takes also to be shared with these players. There's not really anything you can do about this, it's just important healers be aware and ready to keep all players healthy. At 66% in the container, this will make it so when the tank debuffs eventually expire, they'll explode dealing raid damage. This is listed in the dungeon journal as drop-off damage, but it appears it's not your traditional drop-off damage where you'll just want to get maximum distance away from the raid, and instead is a relatively small targeting circle around you that you'll just want to make sure that no other player is within. The next container focused is to do with a bottled anima. When cast, this spawns multiple targeting circles throughout the room that need to be soaked. If a single one is missed, it deals massive and likely lethal raid-wide damage. You only need a single player to soak each patch, and doing so does a moderate burst of damage to that person. At 33% of the container, when a patch is soaked, it will also leave behind a puddle. These deal pretty high ticking damage and are just more annoying than anything else, but there's nothing you can do about them really aside keeping out of them. At 66%, this is made a little worse, as you need to soak the bottled anima twice, as they'll bounce after soaking the first, spawning even more puddles. The next container is the Sins and Suffering. This ability spawns three orbs within the room that deal ticking damage to the nearest players, and at the same time, three players in your raid are debuffed with shared suffering. This creates a beam between the three players that can be used to destroy the orbs. You need to line up your beams in such a way that each orb is hit by a single beam simultaneously in order to destroy all of them. If you take too long to do this, the orbs will eventually explode, dealing massive raid-wide damage over 10 seconds. At 33% in the container, the orbs will be linked themselves by their own beam. This deals large damage to anyone hit by them, so it's really important that you don't run through them. More than anything else, it just makes destroying them take that little bit longer as the debuff players will have to take the long route round to position themselves. And at 66%, this beam will no longer be static and will begin to rotate around the orbs, making it even more difficult to destroy them. As for the final container, it is linked with a concentrated anima. This is a debuff for multiple raid members dealing ticking damage over 10 seconds. When it expires, it deals a moderate burst of damage to all players within 8 yards and spawns some adds. You'll always have one Harness Spectre, and these guys are completely rooted and do not move, and they need to be tanked, otherwise they'll just spam cast Condemn, dealing massive raid-wide damage, and this cannot be interrupted. When being tanked, they'll deal a burst of shadow damage and increase the damage you take from that effect by 10%, and this stacks up. But, it's not cast too often, so providing your DPS is on point, you shouldn't really ever need to swap. As for the other edge, you'll get Conjured Manifestations, and the amount of these guys you get is based on your raid size. These guys will just spam cast Condemn and do absolutely nothing else, however their version can be interrupted. We found it best just to nuke these guys first before swapping to the tank ad. 
We've made sure to spawn these adds as close together as possible just to maximize the amount of cleave damage we can do. Whilst it's possible to spawn them all directly on top of one another, the splash damage on the players spawning them with their debuff would easily get comboed from other mechanics, and we found that just by spawning them as close together without splashing in melee worked perfectly fine. At 33% in the container, players are immediately rooted over the duration of the debuff. This makes spawning them in melee basically impossible unless you're really lucky with the initial targets chosen for the debuff. But if you look really closely at timers and you move closer to the boss just before this debuff comes out, you are definitely going to help on that front. At 66% in the container, when the adds spawn, fragments are also sent out in all directions, and these do a lot of damage if you're hit by them, so you've got to keep a really close eye on their spawn location and make sure you're quick to dodge them. But that's all the mechanics that are in play and how the fight works on Heroic. As for Mythic, there are small mechanical differences, but the main change is that when you click on a container to empty it, instead of removing the energy from the encounter completely, you instead redistribute that energy to the other three closed containers. This essentially makes the fight a DPS race, as clicking them in almost all situations is a bad idea. Because clicking them early, sure, you might be able to remove some augments, but you're just going to get the augments from the later containers earlier, and you're also reducing the enrage timer on the fight, because you're going to get the other containers to 100% energy faster than they otherwise would be. But this is what's going to make Mythic hard. On a first kill, it's likely you're going to have all four containers above 66% energy, forcing you to deal with all eight augments active on the abilities at the same time, which is absolutely nuts. However, as your DPS gets stronger, the fight will become significantly easier, and then the possibility of clicking containers becomes a little bit more realistic, as you're able to choose what is augmented and what isn't. But perhaps it's tuned so that's the case anyway, but on the test, it really didn't suggest that that would be the case. There are a couple other small mechanical differences for the fight on Mythic. One of them is that the tank debuff, when it's applied to you, you'll get two little shadow images that will try to lunge towards you and you've got to face them, similar to how it was with the fight in Dazara Law, the Jade Fire Master people, where you're sent up in the air. You've got a kind of little version of that going on. And instead of there being uh, three orbs with the Sin and Suffering, you'll get four instead. Fortunately, two of them are quite close together, so you just need one player to kind of act as like a corner, cutting two orbs at the same time. But it does require a little bit more coordination and communication, which which is the endless struggle for all of us. So yeah, that's the fight. What are our impressions? So it's a great fight. I don't think there's really many negative things at all to say about this encounter. I loved it on both Heroic and Mythic. One tiny concern about Mythic is potentially how difficult it's going to be, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It is. It looks to be like an end of wing boss. So potentially you could be doing this guy, say, seventh in the instance, right. depending on how everything is tuned. But the last... 20 to 15 percent of the boss's health if all eight augments are going to be active on all of those abilities it's going to be crazy i don't even know how you deal with it yeah it's going to be nuts i like the fact that on heroic as well when we were first testing it and we wasn't sure of the mythic mechanic we're seeing the augments go one by one and my gut feeling was oh they're teaching us how mythic's gonna be you know that you're gonna have to deal with all of this shit at once and that's what it looks to be you know of course there's a potential for groups of crazy good damage to be able to do some maybe small things small cheesy things in terms of maybe bursting through a particular face to make sure it gets less energy or even maybe clicking on some of the um containers on mythic personally i see the strat as nuke boss deal with mechanics pretend the containers don't exist yeah i think um, that's going to be the case until you get into farm where the boss dies far quicker and, and you, you might can, be able to do some funky yeah, stuff you then, might be yeah. able to like click at certain times to prevent a certain augment perhaps you don't want to be rooted by the add debuff as an example and you mm. prefer to place them in the same location every time perhaps you click that after you finish dealing with it for one time some shit like that yeah i, I think one other thing for this fight as well um it's quite cruel to melee of course they're very useful because they have their short cooldown interrupts so when you've got the ads up they can really help keep them under control and generally they have that sort of damage profile where they love to have a bunch of stuff stacked up they can cleave it all down but when it comes down to the potion collecting the potions they don't spawn boss relative so you could be like in the far north of the room and the uh, containers could spawn in the far south as in yep. all of these potions so it makes it so ranged dps and ranged players generally are more useful in that sort of regard because they can cover a wider spread of the encounter space and when it comes to the sins and suffering as well if you're a melee you're just sitting there scratching your ass just waiting for something to happen i guess the boss could be dragged to your particular corner or Which something isn't a good idea eh, i don't think it's going to happen especially when they start fucking rotating whereas yeah. range players you can continue to do your output and the rest of it so if this boss does happen to be difficult i hope it doesn't become so difficult that it's just like right no melee out you go bring in the ranged yeah. um so that i think there is a real potential for that but hopefully it's tuned in such a way that it's not too spiteful i suppose but we'll have to wait and see and aside from that 
Good boss. Really good boss. But thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this boss preview, then do drop us down a like. It helps us out a lot. If you want to keep up to date on any of the encounters within Castle Nafria, then do go check out our guides over on Wowhead. The link for that can be found in the description below. And as always, make sure you're subbed. We're going to be releasing some live guides as soon as the instance comes out in a couple of weeks' time. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.